So we just we just left Gaza about half an hour ago. Uh, heard a few booms while we were crossing the border. Hearing some more now. As you can see above us, a red alert just went up. A few rockets got launched. It looks like they got intercepted. But that's pretty much how it goes here all day. So we were just driving. We, we saw smoke on the side of the road. We walked over here. Um, this just hit a kibbutz. And this is sort of the impact that they have. So this is an app that everyone in this part of Israel has. Uh, it's called Red Alert, and basically it just gives you a warning when a rocket is fired. You've got 15 seconds to seek shelter, basically, if you're in this area. And the guys over my shoulder are the Israeli telecommunications forces that basically are the ones who put these alerts out and are monitoring the situation to let people know when they've got to seek shelter. I went to see one of Israel's missile defense batteries, a part of its Iron Dome rocket interception system. Since 2011, it's significantly reduced the threat of rocket attacks from Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces claim a 90% success rate when it's deployed. As you can see, there's cars sort of coming in and out of here. Uh, people come to watch the Iron Dome. People come to bring the soldiers food, other cleaning supplies, things of that nature to take care of them. Uh, and what they've all told us is that this is really, really a game changer here, and they're really proud of it. It's hard always to hear the sirens and wake up in the morning and the night and to see all the shootings but the soldiers are keeping us safe and we need to bring them food because they don't have much so this is like this is like an organized thing for you guys yeah, yeah. everyone in, on facebook asks like for stuff they need milk right now so i brought them milk this is your way of showing support yeah exactly. hashish <laughs> Yeah. Can you tell us why you're here, why you came to see this? How do you feel about what's going on right now in, in Gaza with all of this happening? I'm I'm not I'm and if they call up you and your friends to go inside for a ground invasion, is that something that you guys want to do? Is it something you feel is necessary? I spoke with Major Aryeh Shalikar, a spokesman for the Israeli Defense Forces. Hi Danny, how are you? Good, Good nice to, to see meet you. you. We already intercepted about 120 during three days, which were launched towards major cities. One of these rockets hitting one house here, I don't know what would happen. Tens of killed Israelis, unthinkable. How active have, have these been right here? Pretty active. Yeah. I've been here yesterday and I saw myself a few interceptions in the air. It's scary. It's a scary situation. You guys are launching a lot of heavy attacks on Gaza. I mean, we, we've been there the past few days. There's lots of civilians getting caught in the crossfire. They have launched over 500, 600 rockets during the last three, four, four days. But right now, five million Israelis under threat, under terror attack. Five million Israelis is more than half of the population. Mm -hmm. Imagine 160 million Americans wouldn't go out of the apartment right now. My mother and sister, they live in Ashdod, the next city. Since five days, they don't leave the apartment. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, not even one meter. They're scared. I mean, it's the same thing though in Gaza. You know, we, have a, we had a situation there where, I know the, the IDF has admitted it was a mistake, but you, know, you had one strike there that killed more civilians than they've done in all these rocket launches so far. Let me tell you, 120 interceptions mm -hmm. above major cities. Imagine we wouldn't have this Iron Dome. We are a, a country protecting our people. We do our utmost. And when we attack, we try to not harm civilians. Again, mm -hmm. the only side who cares for their civilians is our side. Hamas, they celebrate on the streets when they have casualties. They put them in the internet. They're happy about it. We are not happy about it. Look at me. Palestinian dead, Israeli dead is the same for me. We don't want uninvolved people to be killed. That's the main difference between them and us. I'm
אנחנו פה באנו לשמח את החיילים, לתת להם כוחות, עם ישראל חי, ואנחנו מקווים שבעזרת השם עם ישראל ינצח. יחיא מלך המשיח. So we've just arrived in Ashdod, it's one of the closest big cities towards Gaza, and over the past week, dozens of rockets have been fired here. That's not really a new thing, they're sort of under constant threat here, it's not normally as intense, but it does happen. So we're going to go talk to some of the regular people here, spend some time with them, and see how this affects their lives. A local family invited us to Friday night dinner. Hi. Hi. Hey. How are you? Hi, fine. Danny, you nice much. to meet you. How have uh, things been the past few days? Last, Last night was tough. Yeah. So where do I go for eating and, and the siren sound? Uh, we have uh, downstairs in okay. the basement, but you have to be prepared because it was normally a storeroom. It's a concrete. How many times did you have to run down here yesterday? Between uh, five to times, six. Yeah. Five or six times? Yeah, it was uh, very tough. And today a little easier or? Yeah, much easier. Today, no. Only today? in the morning. Three of us normally go down. Yeah. I would normally stay with my son. He doesn't want to go down mm -hmm. uh, when there is siren. So he stays in his bed because normally he sleeps during the day. Uh, so I join him to his room. I don't know if it's wise or not. I don't want to leave him alone. Yeah. So I just uh, hug him and stay with him until it's all finished and then I go back. And we stay between five to ten minutes. And then you go back up. But if he's sleeping, he just stays there and you go jump in his bed with him, yeah. hug him and like, yeah. wow. This building uh, got one uh, missile. Really? Yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Wait, like it was a very small uh, one? or Rough in, his, in uh, Ashdod. Yeah. It was uh, something like uh, 20, 20, 20 rockets last night? 20 rockets in a uh, very uh, few times. So any, anyone and injured? And eat a few cars. Do you ever get used to it? We, right. don't, we don't afraid, but it's, uh, we don't uh, underestimate it. <laughs> hey, Danny. Hi, Danny. Yeah. I literally just landed. I, I landed an hour ago. It feels weird um, sitting in LA when your family is here and the rockets are flying. Should we toast? Let's toast. To peace. To peace. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here right now in Ashdod with the Zilker family uh, having Shabbat dinner. Gaza is about 20 miles away. This city has been the site of constant rocket attacks. And while, you know, it's a bit different than it was for us last night in Gaza City, you know, the conflict is still here. The family here has had to run into their bomb shelter, which is downstairs, um, sporadically over the past few days. And uh, they don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Delicious. You had these three kids that were kidnapped. Yeah. What was the feeling then when, when you guys were reading about these, these kids were missing? Very hard. Very yeah. hard miss feeling and unfortunately it ended very badly. The revenge killing of, uh, I think it was Mohammed Abu Khader, yeah. has provoked a lot of questions. It's exactly the same. Yeah. I don't consider this less than what they did. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same terrible murder. When Israelis took it upon themselves to go and kill this 16-year-old innocent boy, people here were disgusted by it. Not only that, the people who were arrested and were put in prison, that hasn't happened yet on the other side. So does this sort of stuff, does it make you want to move away from here? But this is our country, we don't have, a, we don't have anywhere house <laughs> to go to. to, go to. <laughs> so, just in dessert, sirens are happening right now. Um, we're going down to the shelter. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's in Yeah, he's shaking, huh? It's all like... This is good. It's hard sometimes when you have, you know, teenagers to get a lot of family time together. You can, <laughs> you can make the most of it right now. <laughs> so this is the updates right here that we got on the uh, on the red alert. There's been three in the past two minutes. I think the people here are very lucky that the Iron Dome works so well, because these are there's a lot of rockets, and if these were were hitting, there would most likely be a lot of casualties. Maybe it's not on the scales Gaza, but but this isn't easy for anyone on either side. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. We thought the night was over, but on the way back to our hotel, we heard the sirens once again. You can see all the cars pulled off the road on the highway, so we did too, and sort of sought shelter by this wall. Uh, we heard a boom, it sounded relatively close. We don't see much else, but you know, you just get back in your car and you keep going.